Hi, my name is Patrick Vernon. I am a social studies teacher teaching in Alamance County at the Alamance Virtual School. So the 17th of September is Constitution Day, originally known as Citizenship Day, but then in 2004, President George W. Bush said we also should focus on the Constitution. And so today I have an interview with a reporter who was also an Alamance County student like so many of the students that are going to be viewing this today. That's kind of the main purpose for this. Um, and so we'll start the interview with Natalie Allison, a reporter at the Tennessean newspaper. Oh, thank you, Mr. Vernon. I'm Natalie Allison. Uh, Mr. Vernon was my sixth grade social studies and science teacher at Western Alamance Middle School. Um, I'm trying to think of what year, was it 2004, 2005 maybe? I don't know, I think it was around that year. Um, his class was one of my favorite, his social studies class in particular, science was a whole other thing for me, but his social studies class was one of my favorite classes in all of uh, my, my school experience. I can count a handful of classes that really made an impression on me and Mr. Vernon's was one of those. So pay attention, you're gonna learn a lot, you are learning a lot. Um, I'm a reporter. I currently work at the Tennessean in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I cover state politics. The company that I work for, Gannett, they own eight newspapers in Tennessee. And so I cover state politics for all of those for papers in Memphis and Knoxville and Murfreesboro, Clarksville, other places like that. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the last few years. I moved to Nashville about four years ago. I was at the Times News in Burlington before that. Um, yeah, and I, my next step is actually going to be moving to Washington, D.C. pretty soon, where I'll be covering national politics. I love reporting. It's what I've wanted to do um, actually since I was in ninth grade. So, One of the reasons that I've asked you to, to come today, and again, thank you for coming, is we're talking about the Constitution. And there's so many things about the Constitution. It has all these rules and you know, how long the president can be in charge and what happens if the president is no longer in charge. But it also has the amendments. Because like there were some states like North Carolina wasn't going to uh, ratify the Constitution until there were some amendments because people's rights need to be stated out. And the First Amendment has lots of different rights in it. There's freedom of speech and of religion, but, but the freedom of press. And so that's one of the reasons I asked you to join us today, because being a reporter, why do you think uh, freedom of the press is so important? And obviously the First Amendment, freedom of the press is a big part of that, but uh, also just freedom to, to practice religion of your choosing, freedom to protest the government. Um, all of those kind of things are tied up in one in that um, the, our government, they, they can't tell us what you have to believe or what you have to say or what you have to profess um, or anything like that. And that, that translates to the media and that um, unlike in some countries where reporters are essentially censored from what they can publish about the government and government corruption and, and mistreatment of people, um, that's not something the government can do here in the United States. And we can write and report stories that are gonna make the president very mad and make the people in power very mad and make the governor mad and, and make your local school board members mad. And guess what? They can't stop you. And so um, that's crucial for people who live in um, a city or state or anywhere in this country to know what the people in power are up to. And once they find out to be able to petition the government for them to change course. And so it's really just crucial to um, this democratic republic that we're in, that people can know what's going on and it takes reporters digging um, and putting that information out there for the world for them to be able to know. Sometimes different sides, you know, liberals versus conservatives sometimes say that the press is more this way or more that way. Um, but if you really dig in, um, you know, all the, all the press will, will pepper the, uh, the government folks. Um, and so what would be your, your response to someone that says that this is like, this is like mainstream, it's not either side, it's, it's, the, it's everybody. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so important for, regardless of a publication cleaning or bias, or even if they're reporting something that you would dispute as factual to have the right to do it, because, you know, where do you draw the line? Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's crucial. It's crucial that, that both liberals and conservatives and folks in the middle and libertarians and, um, socialists and whoever else, you know, they, in America, they have the right to, to publish news through their lens. And I think it's healthy today for people to consume a variety of different types of news. Um, you know, if, if your family only watches um, one type of TV news, then 
probably most of the way they're going to think about things, talk about things in your house will probably echo a lot of what they're hearing on that channel. I know that from experience as well. Um, so I think it's important, you know, as you're figuring out what you think about the world and current events in the coming years that, um, that you all take in a variety of different kinds of news sources to sort of um, hear it from different perspectives. And maybe one outlet is just going to focus on um, one aspect of, of a big issue, but another will make you think about it a little differently. Yes, I know on my phone, I've got different apps from different places. And I, I like to do the, especially I'm a, I'm a radio person. And so I like to hear the little you know hourly updates. So here's one from this side, here's from that side. And you hear some of the same stories, but and, and there's truth in there, but then there's also, you know, some opinions. So we have to be able to tell the difference. Yeah, I find often, you know, the truth is somewhere in the middle <laughs> from all what the all, what all of the talking heads are saying. And so, um, and also, and then there's a difference in turning on the news and, and having these um, people offering commentary and their opinion versus reading, you know, a, what we would call a hard news story in journalism that um, comes from a more traditional publication. As the interview continues, I want to give you some context. And so there are some links to some articles, one that Natalie wrote, and it's where the governor of Tennessee is talking about the decision that he's made. Um, one of the things that I hear in him say is that we are on a quest as a country to become a more perfect union. And that goes back to the preamble, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. That's a process. And so the governor was talking about the process that as we grow and evolve as a country, that we are on that continuing quest. So there'll be a link at the bottom of this video that you can go to that article. I was following a story that you've been doing where there were some statues in the, um, in the Tennessee government houses that um, the people at that time were prominent leaders, but it's also been found out since then that they, um, had views that we now see as as racist, and and so um, can you kind of go into what was the decision that they made to take that down? Um, so this is a years long story in Tennessee. So there um, there are some statues. They're called busts because they're like a statue from the chest up of a few different historical figures in the Tennessee State Capitol, uh, which is where the the House and the Senate meet and and hold business. And um, one of one of those was a, a guy named Nathan Bedford Forrest, who he was um, in the Civil War. He was a Confederate general, um, had led a battle that uh, many historians historians today say was was essentially a massacre, uh, predominantly of of surrendered Black Union soldiers. Um, he before the Civil War, he had been a slave trader. Um, after the Civil War, he went on to become one of the early leaders of the Ku Klux Klan. And so, you know, he, he when people think about folks they want to honor, many critics of the statue would say this is not someone who needed to be honored in the halls of government. We have all of these other Tennesseans who have contributed many positive things to the world. Um, and yet his, his statue was put up in 1978. So it wasn't like this happened right after the Civil War. This happened, um, you know, and, and some of the legislators who are still there in, in their time in, in service. Um, they started having that conversation in Tennessee and it's gone on for years. There's been votes to remove it and it didn't pass. And, and the last governor couldn't get it down. And this governor finally said enough is enough. He's actually a Republican. Uh, it's time for this to come down. And it was very controversial. Um, but when it came time for them to take down this statue in this public space, um, they, the, the state troopers um, and some other building officials started telling the reporters we had to leave that we couldn't stay there. And um, there was this, it, it was longer than it was captured in this video, but there's this video that started going around sort of the tail end of my, uh, I don't want to call this standoff, it's probably a little dramatic, but um, my interaction with a state trooper, he was one of several who had come over to me um, to try to force me to leave this public hallway where I, as a reporter, was waiting for the statue to be removed so we could document it. And um, I, I knew what the law said. I knew that the law said that the, the House and Senate speakers, those are the people who control the House and Senate chambers in Tennessee, that they actually had control of the second floor of the state capitol, which is where their chambers are. And I knew that, you know, this trooper couldn't tell me I had to leave. I knew that um, the governor's office, who was directing the troopers to do that, actually didn't have the authority to tell us to leave. Um, and so as a reporter, I, you know, I, I stood on my right to be there. This is a public space. 
Uh, first of all, uh, that's most important. Secondly, I know that the Tennessee state law said that as a reporter um, or as any as a member of the public, you know, these people can't tell me to leave without the permission of the House and Senate speakers. And so finally, you know, the, the troopers, they picked up the phone, they called the House and Senate speakers and sure enough, um, they said, yeah, you know, this reporter has a right to be there. And While Natalie was in the state government building there in Tennessee, a fellow news outlet, the Tennessee Holler, started recording and putting on Twitter the interaction between Natalie and the state troopers. I have a right to be here. No, ma'am. I see that you're in my face. That's fine, but I'm going to make sure to go. go. We've asked you nicely. Natalie is right there. I'm going to make sure nothing happens to Natalie. Nothing's going to happen to you. Okay, that's good. This is I the, told them the two speakers control the second floor. They say, claim that general services controls the hallway. Yes. Yes. I mean, are this, can the speakers come and, and do something like this? Go ahead and start putting those ones up over there. Okay, well, stages. apparently not fast enough. Yeah, just leave uh, the highway patrol facing the enemy force in the lead. And then once they're down, they pick off the ones at the bottom. Yeah, I've said that. I mean, it would be helpful if the speakers could communicate to them that. Um, but, you know, it, it shows that people in government, just because something is a law or something is, is in the Constitution, it doesn't mean they're always going to err on the side of following the law or, um, you know, their, their orders being constitutional. And so it's so important for us as members of the public, certainly as a member of the news media, to be familiar with our rights, to know that public spaces are, are spaces we can occupy and, and to remember the importance of um, us being there as a reporter to bear witness to history being made, yeah. In this day and age, sometimes there has to be footage of it. So like there was a colleague of yours who was actually, what, streaming it on Twitter, I think? Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's important for us um, as, as journalists, as members of the public, that we do have each other's backs when, you know, when you see someone's First Amendment rights being violated, I mean, that's, that's a time for others to speak up. And sometimes it does take a few voices saying, hey, hey, this isn't, this isn't constitutional um, for folks in power to, to you know, have a, a rude awakening, if you will, when they realize they're being called out and they're, you know, they're not upholding your rights. And we all have to, I think, speak up for the freedom of the press because, you know, the people in power change. And so if the press is ever diminished, that, you know, and then someone, you know, the party power changes, then, you know, we, we've got to keep the, the, pr the press free. Yeah, absolutely. It's important. So what other things would you like to share um, before, before we head out that, you know, you wanted to pass on to the students either about the constitution or just like following uh, what you enjoy? Um, yeah. Um, so I think I mentioned this earlier, but so being a reporter is something that I have wanted to do since I started high school. Um, it was actually a high school ninth grade history class project, um, but it got me thinking about becoming a reporter. And so I think my takeaway from that is that, you know, the experiences you're having in these classes, even in middle and high school are so important to helping you figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life and um you know it's so easy sometimes to just be like oh i have to do this you know this stupid project or oh like i have to listen to this guy talk for an hour um but it, you know if you pay attention like there'll be things in you that um will kind of start to tick when they talk about something that's really interesting to you some kind of topic or this or that and pay attention to those things and explore those things when you get to high school when you get to college you know get involved in extracurriculars that let you explore that element of, of math or politics or social studies or science or, or writing or reporting or things like that, um, helping people, whatever it is that, you know, can really 
lead to a fulfilling um, career if, if you kind of start thinking now about what is really important to you and what you enjoy doing. And of course, here comes the teacher in me. Sometimes <laughs> you don't realize at that moment that it's what you're interested in, right? So you just kind of want to, you need to dive in and maybe find out it's something you didn't realize that you liked, right? Yeah, yeah, be open. Just, yeah, be open. Have an open mind, even if it doesn't seem like something that your friends or your family have ever been interested in. If, if there's some topic that's really interesting to you, um, yeah, follow that. Go after it. I, 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 I enjoy seeing where my classmates are now and remembering what they were like in school and things, the topics they were really smart in and, and where they excelled and how I learned from them then and how many of them have kind of followed similar trajectories and, and exploring um, you know, areas of work that, that made sense based on what they liked then and, and just people who had open minds to, to learning. And um, yeah, Mr. Vernon is, is brilliant. So definitely, definitely listen when he's talking. And, or any teacher for that matter. Any teacher, but particularly Mr. Vernon. I can't speak for any other teacher, but yes, he's great. And earlier before we started recording, you said that you've, um, you're, you're packing up, moving to DC. So I guess I should get, let you get back to your packing, but, but thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, well, it's great to talk to you all. Happy Constitution Day, everyone. Thanks for having me, Mr. Vernon. So I definitely do thank Natalie for coming today. I thank you for watching the video. And I think Governor Bill Lee, uh, if you go to that article that's down there at the bottom, Governor Bill Lee of Tennessee talks about how we are in a quest for a more perfect union. Our constitution is the oldest written constitution in the world that's, in, that's being used because it evolves and changes. And that quest that we have here in the United States for a more perfect union. Thanks for stopping by.